Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our late summer creeps into September, and our early fall Sundays bring cooler days. It's kind of hard to imagine that at 90 we are rejoicing what we do. But with that comes teachings by Jesus and a brilliant set of parables that you've been hearing in church over the last couple of Sundays. And the passage today of the Good Shepherd is just, is just such a parable, is it not? And the woman with the coin. The, this image is so powerful that it remains on ancient tomb walls and altars stained glass windows for over two millennia. Today, it's very difficult to even walk into church and not see either a lamb or the good shepherd carrying a lamb. Uh, And in fact, we we think of this Sunday as a good shepherd Sunday. I wish to begin my thoughts today uh, about the good shepherd and the lost coin as they are presented to us together not as single parables, but joined by those opening sentences and challenges by the religious, by suggesting that their message is not actually unique in the teaching, but rather corresponds to the continuing gospel message. In fact, we see a clever parallel here between this couplet of parables and the parable of the prodigal son, right? Uh, The story of the son who goes off and takes his father's wealth and squanders it and his father greets him even before he comes up the road, right? He runs out to see him. And then there is the second son in that parable, right? You remember the second son who doesn't understand what's happening. Just as the shepherd seeks the lamb, the gracious father meets the son, Just as the gracious father speaks to the son at home, the woman seeks the coin at home. There is an outside parable and an inside parable. A parable about those who leave and are lost and a parable about those who are here and lost. The message that pervades the gospel is this, that God seeks a relationship with those who are lost who are not in our congregations, our churches, as part of our mission, and that God seeks the conversion of those who are in our congregations. God's action of seeking our relationship begins, of course, in the beginning of Scripture when God creates both of us, male and female, as, uh, as God's, for God's pleasure, so that, as the Scripture says, He may come and walk with them in the garden. This is about a God who wishes to be with his creation and especially the people of his own making, a a gift to us. For God loves God's people and wants to have us as fellow members of God's family. So God seeks us while we are yet far off, right? God died for us on the cross. Passage to mend the gulf. God seeks us. While we had not yet known his name, God God seeks us even before we were born. God has been seeking us. So it is a God who looks for us like a shepherd or waits longing for us like the father as we come up the broken road that we have traveled home. God seeks us lost in God's house. I would love to believe that at baptism and confirmation, Our clergy powers were so amazingly great, they perfected everything. But they don't. (laughs) 
as is witness to this crowd here gathered <laughs> along with their bishop, right? <laughs> well, we know that we struggle, we struggle. Uh, and to live by the words that Jesus has given us. So God seeks us here too. God will turn over, in fact, our house of beliefs to find us. Well, God sends us little shepherds. That's one of the ways in which God does this work. Little shepherds after the great shepherd to find the lost, show them a way home. That's the work you and I are supposed to do the rest of the week is be out there shepherding, shepherding in our workplaces, shepherding in our families, shepherding in uh, the lives that we lead, wherever we are found ourselves. We are to image the body of Christ in the world through our actions, through our words, through our patience, through our humility, through our love. This is the way in which we discover lost sheep, and they want to know what it is. I see how you live your life. What is this that has changed you, and, and as, as Peter says at the gates, I'll give you what I have been given, right? Which is the grace of God. For gold and silver I have not. I'll give you what I've been given, the greatest treasure of all. And in the parish, it's harder. I actually think in some ways it's a little easier out there for somebody who's searching to find a good disciple and, and ask. Now, there may be other stumbling blocks to that, but I'm just going to say that once we're here, we actually have a problem continuing the discipleship work. I mean, we're busy, right? We, we're busy. We talked today in the Bible study about how many lists we have of things we have to do. But the truth is that, that there is a way in which we as Episcopalians and Anglicans form ourselves and disciple ourselves. And the first is regular daily prayer. You know, and I, I don't know how many of you pray every day. If you're like me, you have really good intentions, right? But you probably don't make it all seven days with prayer, like me. Right? But the task isn't to necessarily make it every day, but to remember that you missed it yesterday and pick it up today. You see, the task, as we say in confirmation, is to return to the work. Seek to be daily prayer. So if you remember in the middle of the day, just... Just pray to God and be grateful for something you're seeing around you. It doesn't take, you don't have to get out the book of common prayer. I know, it seems like maybe you got to, no, God loves it when we just give thanks. I show a little gratitude. Now, I imagine all of you in this room come every Sunday. Right? Every Sunday. You are faithful Sunday goers. All of you. Um, I'm a faithful Sunday worshiper because I have to be. <laughs> Can I have an amen to that? Right? I mean, because there's some days you just need a little vacation from church, aren't there? I get it. You know, I can imagine that when I retire, uh, the rector will be sad when I'm not there seeing my grandchildren. Right? But I'm going to go see my grandchildren. That's one of the things that happens. You want to see your children. You want to see your family. You want to travel on vacation. All kinds of stuff happens to us in our lives. Maybe you get a job that causes you to work on Sunday. Well, there's another six days a week you might show up at church and probably think it's just closed all the time, but it isn't. And the reality is we've got to find regular worship. We need to spend one day a week for at least an hour where we're focused on giving glory and worshiping our Lord Jesus Christ. So that we're thinking of somebody who's not us. Worship that we do today is not about us. It is about giving glory to God for what God has done for us. And receiving food that will enable us to continue to the work in the week. So at least we, we believe that discipleship happens because we attend worship. Now I went to the small uh, Sunday Bible group this morning. And I will tell you that it literally, it's in here. It's in my, it's in my page here in the sermon. And that is, I actually think if you want a better relationship with Jesus Christ, you have to read the Bible at least once a week and share that with others. I, I think you've got to show up and read the Bible and talk about how hard it is <laughs> to follow Jesus in this world and how you failed this week. And if you'll do that, I actually think, one, you'll realize you're just like everybody else because it's so difficult to compare our insides with everybody else's outsides. But if you could be honest and find groups, and I'm just saying on Sunday morning, you've got a couple of spaces there. 
have people, eight people, show up, read the passage for the day or read through a, a, a book. But if you'll do that, you will disciple yourselves. And on the weeks and days in which you're unable to disciple yourself, everybody else will hold you up in prayer on that day when you gather for Scripture. You see? And when anybody comes to church, what they find is a bunch of people in church struggling being found. Like the lost coin. And they'll say, huh, I found God's people. And they're just like me, struggling for a relationship with God. And I'll tell you, the reality in all of this is that we want a better relationship with God, but we don't want to put in the time. I mean, that's honest, right? I mean, there's no shame in admitting the truth. Um, Jesus has taken away the shame of it. So if you're feeling shame because you didn't live up to Jesus' life this week, well, thank God Jesus died on on the cross for you. (laughs) <laughs> right? There's no shame in it just admitting it didn't work out this week. And trying again. Trying again. But we fill our lives with a lot of other stuff, expecting our relationship with Jesus to change. If there's anything I want you to leave with, I want you to leave today with this thought. God continues to seek even those who think they are found as well as the lost. The good shepherd seeks you out. The prodigal father waits for you. The faithful widow turns her house over for you. And every time in that moment, God is there for you, waiting for you to get finished with whatever you have, whatever's taken you away. God gets it, God understands. That's the purpose of Jesus. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we say, your devices and desires of your own heart, we say. God is there. God is there seeking you. While you find no comfort in worldly things and only empty promises, God is there. God's staff awaits to gather you in. How long, the scripture says, have I wanted to gather you under my wing? The things that you fill your mind with, your heart and your stomach, you walk away empty, but God says at this table you'll be filled. At this table you'll find the sustenance that you seek. Your dwelling place in this house is forever, no matter how many times you miss this last month. Your dwelling place has been made for you here. No matter how far you go, there's a home for you. Like lost sons and sheep and coins, Each of us is being sought by the good shepherd. Now I'm going to end with a little story. There is an airport chaplain. You may not know this, but airports have chaplains that work. And in England, most of the chaplains are Anglican. They're Episcopal uh, English folks who, who are there in the chapels and will pray for people as they make their journey through the airport. And one, uh, uh, one story that I heard at Lambeth goes like this, that George, the airport chaplain, was uh, doing his regular duty, had been to the chapel, and was approached by a gentleman who had uh, wanted to be baptized. He was being deported, and uh, all of his attempts to rectify the immigration issues had failed. Not by his own doing, just by the fact, just like here in the U.S., sometimes the immigration office is slow, and so you have to start over. I mean, it's just a reality. And so uh, he, but he said, I want to be baptized before I'm, I, I leave the country. And so George said, yes, I'm, I'm happy to baptize you. And he says, normally when people are baptized, they choose a name, maybe a saint's name, right, or something like that, to be renamed. Uh, uh, as their new Christian name, what, and what name would you like? And the man said, Jeff. I'd like to be, I'd like my Christian name to be Jeff. Now, George could, you know, I don't think there's a St. Jeff. <laughs> Y'all can go check the internet, but I didn't look at it, but I think George had the same thing as me. He's like, why do you want to be named Jeff? That's a strange baptismal name to request. 
And the guy said, one Sunday I was walking down the street. And out on the street was a man next to some open doors. And he said, hey, why don't you join us for prayer today? He said, I joined that church. And I became a regular worshiper. I went to Bible study. I became a Christian at that church. And I just didn't get baptized because I've, I've got to be deported. But I don't want to be deported without being baptized a Christian. He said, the man on the, on the street, his name was Jeff. We need to be disciples and found. But there is a world of people out there hoping that the good shepherd, Jeff, will be standing on the sidewalk right in the middle of their lives and give them a little direction to the grace and peace that they so desperately need. And that's some good work to do with folks like you, my friends here at Liberty, right? It's good. Every day I hope Jesus finds you. And in turn, you might pray that Jesus finds me every day too. Hmm? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter, at Texas Bishop, and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.